Hi, I'm Edikawa Mortare, and today I'd like to play with some JavaScript animation. Let me click to show you how this works first. I'd like to show you a little bit about how I did that. This is some of the work I used to do at Fuse, and I'm just experimenting now with JavaScript and CSS. And I'd like to go through the code briefly as to how you set up such a transition. So the basic setup of this page is a standard HTML document, and I've just inlined the styles and and the body and the JavaScript all in one place. I will provide the source code for this in the link on the video. But let's look at the basic setup. I have the body. I was playing with an image before I left this out and I have this SVG bit and this is the part that's actually drawing the spiral. So when I draw the spiral, this is an SVG. And there are a couple things that are happening here. I'm both creating a spiral effect and I'm animating it. But the actual HTML is very limited. I just have the SVG and I just have the path. In the JavaScript code, I'm assembling the SVG. So I create the path and attach it to the SVG. And this is what creates the spiral as there is no native spiral effect. Let me simplify this first so we can see a little bit clearer what I'm doing. So if I remove this circle here, and instead of using what I call the nuanced path, I'm going to use the basic path. This gives us a slightly different effect than what I had before. So when I reload this, this gives this more of an effect. And at first it may look better in the middle, but you quickly see the problem. It's a little bit jagged on the sides. It's not a true spiral. And it leaves us a little bit in the middle. And I'll get to the little bit in the middle somewhat afterwards. <clears throat> so let's first of all see what am I doing to create the spiral. The spiral itself is there's a path and it just starts as a path. Good enough. And how do we create this path? In the JavaScript code, I say let path equals basic path, and then I set the attribute of the SVG. This is very standard. When I click it, it adds the item. In the basic path, what am I doing in the path? This is using SVG data to create the path. These are a series of little commands. In this one, I'm using the M command and the L command down here. M0.5, or no comma, you can put a comma if you want, but M0505 means move to the center because I have set up a relative view box and that's done up here in the SVG. You can see the view box. I am setting the extents of this from zero to one comma one. And that just gives me a good base to do the relative calculations. So we have that. And so this movement, this says move to the center of that area. And then I would say, how many loops do I wanna have? I wanna have 12 loops. That's how many loops I want from the center off to the side of the screen. Cover corner loops is a very simple calculation. It's just saying, well, I have the corners. So let's say for a second I didn't have this. Let's just set this to loops, and I can show you what happens without this value. If I reload this, we'll watch the same animation again, but we'll see what happens if I don't have that coverage value because this is creating 12 loops to the side, but then it doesn't get these corners because the 12 loops just cover the main body of the screen. So that's why I do this cover corner loops. And this is basically a very simple calculation. You can draw the diagram for this a bit of trigonometry, just the square root of two basically, plus one cover an inner circle. Don't have to worry about it. And we go through that number of loops. And with that number of loops, it covers the whole screen. And for each item of the loop, it's a very standard for loop. So for loop, loopless cover loops, these are the number of loops we're doing. And then for each loop, we calculate the radius. And this is where it's a bit weird because the radius of a spiral increases at every point along that spiral. And this is why this is compared to the entire number of loops and not just the current loop. And I divide it by two because the radius is split in half. But this is a very basic calculation. You'll see the X and Y then are the standard math, the cosine and sine operation, and the line. If, if I increase the number of loop steps here, <clears throat> so I have 16 loop steps. If I increase this number to a very large number, you would see that the quality of the, of the spiral actually improves. It gets much smoother. This is creating a lot more lines and but this is going to get harder and harder for the system to draw because this is a lot of lines. You don't really need this many segments. This is 64 segments per, per cycle. 
And it depends on your application, but for simple loop, that's probably not so good. So I'll put it down to 16. If you want to get it, if you really want to see what's happening, put it down to four, then this gets a little bit excessive and then you get a very balky effect. So this makes it very clear what the number of loop steps is doing is how many points in the loop is it going to cover. So let's go back to 12, or was it 16? I don't remember what it was. And let's keep going, it was 16 down here. And so that's the basic part there. Now before I move on to the next nuance circle, what I like to look at is the animation as well. When we click on this box, we'll see the on-click handler start. This does a CSS animation by adding the class. We have the start function at the bottom, and it takes that element and it adds the class anim to it. And then when you click again, it removes the anim. Unfortunately, I don't have the reverse animation working yet, but the forward animation is simply by adding a class. That's how CSS does animation. And you'll notice in my CSS at the top, I have anim things. And this basically sets up the path for it. And let's look at the path first. This is what I'm actually looking at. The path here says, well, this is the animation. We're going to set animation is going to go forward. But let's see what happens first if I remove all of this. We can see it without the animation then. And apparently not. Apparently I have to get rid of something else. Anim path. All right, so I'm gonna to have to set the initial stroke width to, let's say three or four. Oh, that's too wide. All oh, right, that's too wide because I'm doing it on a grid of one comma one. There we go. So this is without the animation. This is just what it looks like in the end. So this is the static form of this. And the animation just says, well, let's modify this. We're gonna do it just a little bit here. And the reason I was looking at this is this, in these animations, it's not the animation is interesting, it's this dash array and dash offset that was of interest to me. This is the type of work I did at Fuse. The last thing I did there was to create partial line animations. And this is what these do. Without getting too into the details, the offset says, where do I start drawing the line? And the dash array says, which chunks do I actually draw? And you can look at the documentation for these. They're not exactly the clearest things to use, but they basically say, well, I'm not gonna draw the full curve. So while this is the full curve, this is all I've done in the JavaScript is create this full curve. The CSS says, well, let's not do that full curve. Let's start it here. And then we're gonna run this animation called dash for 10 seconds and dash changes the dash offset. It starts at 100 and goes down to zero where zero is the start and 100 sort of the end. And that gives us the actual animation. So again, this actual static content on the page hasn't changed. We're just doing a CSS animation of the offset. And that's the basic part of how the CSS animation works. Now, so we have two issues here. The first issue was that it's kind of blocky and we don't want to increase the number of segments. The second issue we'll see right at the end of this. The second issue being this little chunk here. And this is actually a rendering error in Firefox and this differs per platform and it has to do with the way they do the strokes. They are not properly overlapping the strokes. And these types of rendering errors are really annoying, but this is a very common one and it's very hard to get rid of and there's open defects on it and it looks like nobody's interested in fixing them. So you're going to have to work around these issues. But let's look at the first one, the jaggedness. I don't like that jaggedness, but I don't want to increase the number of counts. So this is where I created the nuanced path. And the nuanced path also tries to take care of that little drawing error, but let's ignore that bit for a sec. So the nuanced path, um, I don't, I have to reload, I have to reload, I forgot to reload, sorry. So the nuance path, ignore the middle for a second. The nuance path is fairly, fairly round and it has the same number of loops to loop steps. It only has 16 loop steps and we can actually reduce that even more. And it's still fairly round, but you can notice the wiggle in the path. It's not completely round, but at least it looks smooth. So we're gonna go back to 16. And what this is doing is instead of using lines, the code here gets a little bit more complicated and 
it says, let's start creating tangents. And it's going to use the curve command and it's going to calculate the tangent offset, which is somewhat semi-optimal that if you were drawing a circle with Bezier curves, and that's what a curve is, how do you set the control points of those Bezier curve curves so it looks kind of like a circle, it matches as close as possible. And that's you can't do it 100% with a Bezier curve. That's why you still need a few loop steps to simulate it. And this one gets fairly close and you can look at this <clears throat> more closely afterwards. And this is a fairly nice approach to doing this and it, it reduces the number of curves. You don't have to have 64. You could increase the loop steps as well, but there's a little point. So this one is a little bit more efficient, less curves. But we also have something else we're fixing with the nuanced one. And you notice the middle here isn't a full circle. It does something a little bit weird. There is a small defect there. And this is kind of hard to jump from the circle to the full circle is an issue. So we still have the drawing error. And what I do with the drawing error is I simply put a circle on top of it. Now that's kind of lame. And so watch, there's a circle there that grows and then the spiral grows along with it. And that's masking the drawing error. So when it gets to the end, we don't have that little dot. The little dot is gone and we don't have that drawing problem. And that's because I'm putting the circle on top of it. And the circle has to have a certain width and radius. And this is rather unfortunate that the radius here is calculated as is this stroke width. And I don't know how to do that directly in CSS and HTML. If you had a template on the server side, it'd be much easier to calculate these values because these values relate to <clears throat> the number of loops. So you can see here, those values are the 0.25 divided by the loops and that's a stroke width as well. And so if I modify the number of loops, I'd have to modify those as well. For example, if I reduce the number of loops in the nuance path, I'll refresh that. First of all, the radius is wrong and the stroke width also will not cover the entire screen anymore. And that's how I'm covering, I'm making it wider. It's gonna be partial and you're left with this. So those values all tie together. And if you're doing this by hand, you'll have to wear this. If you're doing a server-side template, which you most likely are for any kind of web app, then you have to calculate these values in the CSS and the HTML and the JavaScript. Though perhaps you could stick a bit more in the JavaScript by just setting the attribute instead and then modifying the stroke width. So setting this all back to the way it was, let's take a look at the animation one more time. So it's a simple spiral. You may want to use this type of effect for a transition between two scenes, between two screens, making images come and go. I did a quick demo here with a cat because it really likes cats. If I can get the control, shift D to not work. So let's get the cats again here. And so if you had an image on the screen and you wanted to fade it away, this type of effect could be used that. So we click that and watch the cat slowly fade away. We get a spiral, it starts covering the cat. And the alternative is to try and reveal a cat and that one will be working the opposite way. And there's many options to do this. Okay, I'm gonna throw this code up on somewhere and then I'll put a link to it in the description. Please be sure to follow me on Twitter and if you like my videos, subscribe to my channel and subscribe to me on Patreon. And I hope you found this video interesting and I'll be sure to do more. Thank you.